uh, we pass to the next one. Uh, I introduce Carlo Mani from Roma Tor Vergata, uh, Italy. Uh, Chebyshevian Beast Plains in Isogeometric Analysis. So you are welcome. So do you see and do you yes, hear? Yes. Okay, good. Let us hope that uh, you will uh, keep uh, keep hearing. Okay. Yes. So uh, I, I'm sorry for the trouble, and I'm sorry for not attending uh, all the talks before. But uh, unfortunately, I was teaching till half past four. I'm sorry about that. So in uh, I I will thank Vlad and the organizer for inviting me in this workshop. And I, I will present some, say, general, a quite uh, introductory material about uh, the use of um, classes of uh, splines, actually Chebyshevian splines, in uh, isogeometric analysis, which is, uh, say, a general paradigm, a general environment for the numerical treatment of PDEs. What I will, I'm going to present is based on, uh, say, several works uh, with uh, several collaborators. Here, I just mentioned my colleagues here in Roma, Carlo Garroni, Francesca Pelosi, Maria Lucia Sampoli, which is actually not in Roma, but uh, still we have a strong collaboration, and then Espen Sanden and Hendrik uh, Spelius. So um, uh, what uh, I'm going to, 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 to say, is uh, that uh, um, actually uh, my talk has, uh, in a sense, a subtitle. We are, we are moving from geometric modeling to numerical simulation. And I, do, I hope that it will be clear why I'm saying this. So um, everybody knows that, say, geometric modeling is, uh, say, uh, the, the collection of methods and algorithms to construct and represent curves, surfaces, and volumes. And uh, it is of interest to say in uh, CAD, in um, different areas, say in robotics, uh, in scientific visualization, and many, many much more. And uh, what are, uh, what is the, the core, the mathematical core of uh, any uh, CAD system? Uh, for sure, we can say that uh, the BISP lines are the mathematical core of these systems. Uh, and uh, everybody knows that these splines are uh, just uh, a special uh, way, a special form uh, to represent a piecewise polynomial, either uh, if we think uh, this piecewise polynomial in the shape of functions, of curves, or surfaces, or whatever. Actually, uh, this is the outline of my talk, and uh, uh, I, I will briefly uh, summarize uh, uh, the, the basic uh, idea about uh, and the basic tools about these clients and uh, the generalizations I'm interested in, uh, which allow to consider uh, not only polynomial, uh, uh, polynomial spaces. And uh, uh, as uh, you have seen uh, um, quite uh, extensively in the talk, at least of Costanza before, and also not only we are not we don't want to be confined to the case of tensor product spaces. And then after this, uh, say, introduction, I will move to, say, general, some general idea, results, and problems about the, the use of this line and their generalization in numerical simulation in the special context of isogeometric analysis. Uh, since I've been asked by Vladimir in this direction, I would, uh, if uh, I have time, I would... Uh, conclude my talk with um, a special problem that I'm recently working in. So this is a little bit more, say, uh, specialized and advanced. And I will conclude with some uh, future perspective. So uh, as uh, uh, we, everybody know, uh, these lines uh, are uh, completely defined whenever you give uh, a sequence of points, a, a non-decreasing uh, sequence of points, which are called nodes. According to Carl de Boer, nodes make the these lines. And um, there are several, uh, a huge amount of ways to define these lines, but uh, from the practical point of view for the implementation, 
probably the, the famous recurrence relation that you see in the slide is the, the most effective one. This relation is uh, usually called uh, indeed uh, the Bohr relation, but actually uh, this is already uh, present in some early work of, by uh, Popovich and Chakalov in the early 30s. And um, here in this talk, I will denote with uh, B, I, P, and C, the B spline, the ith B spline of degree P, and capital C will be the sequence of nodes. So um, this uh, is uh, everything you need to, to work with uh, this, uh, these functions. And uh, in particular, the degree here is P, and it will be P um, for all the talk, of course. And this is a little bit unusual, but it's uh, what uh, it is usually uh, considered and denoted in the uh, context of isogeometric analysis. So just uh, to, to be familiar to, with, with these functions, so um, they are uh, piecewise polynomials uh, in uh, the interval between two nodes. They have uh, minimum support, P uh, plus one node intervals. Uh, remember that the node interval can be also uh, co uh, collapsing to one point. And um, also the smoothness of this function can be immediately deduced by uh, the, the sequence of nodes is given by the uh, degree minus the multiplicity of a single node. Here you have some, uh, some picture for uh, say uniform and, and uh, uh, non-uniform uh, node sequences. Uh, as um, as um, we have seen in the, in the picture, these lines are uh, non-negative and they form a partition of unity. And this has uh, very interesting consequences uh, in the area of modeling uh, related to the convex hull properties, as uh, you can see in this, uh, in this uh, picture. One could guess why uh, these plines are so popular, uh, why they are really the core of the uh, um, CAD system. Uh, well, um, first of all, they enjoy several nice properties that uh, um, can be immediately and clearly deduced from the sequence of nodes. Whenever you see the nodes, you understand everything about this function. You don't need anything else. But from the practical point of view, it is also very important the fact that there are efficient and stable algorithms for their evaluation, manipulation, refinement, and so on. In addition, they are also so popular because uh, uh, they um, are the best way, best uh, in, in a special sense, to uh, represent a piecewise polynomial, at least best from the geometrical point of view, uh, because uh, the bisprime basis is uh, the optimal normalized uh, uh, totally positive basis for, uh, for this piece. So I don't want to go into the details for this, for this fact, but this is quite important from the geometrical point of view. But since we are uh, going to move from modeling to simulation, uh, the geometric properties are not the only properties which are important for the function we are going to deal with. And actually also say some more analytic properties are very important if you want to go for approximation and uh, uh, approximation of solution of PDs. Uh, first of all, uh, you have, say, this uh, stability relation that you can uh, see for the discipline basis that uh, you, can, uh, you can bound uh, the, the norm of a function uh, in terms of uh, the norm of the coefficients and, uh, and vice versa. And uh, the important uh, fact is that the constant Kp is only dependent uh, on the degree P is independent on the sequence of the nodes. And here I just wrote the infinity norm just for sake of simplicity and of um, notation, but say similar um, inequalities can be uh, obtained in an LQ, LQ norm. And then another very important uh, fact is the approximation power of, 
of the, um, the space that uh, is spanned by a sequence of these plants. Here you have a general result and um, is in a general LQ norm. And uh, you basically see that uh, what is uh, going on is that um, you can say bound this error in terms of the maximal grid spacing of the node vectors. And uh, you have a constant K again, which uh, uh, is independent of the sequence of nodes. This is very important. Uh, or the, the, the nodes you just uh, you just uh, you just see the, the nodes in uh, uh, this uh, a h x c which is the maximal distance of the nodes. But actually, this constant k is not uh, so constant in a sense because uh, it is true that it does not depend on the sequence of the nodes, but it depends on the degree p on the smoothness of the spline and uh, on the smoothness of the function that uh, you, you want to approximate. And uh, uh, how this constant k depends on these variables is very, is very important when you, you want to, to use this function in, uh, in approximation, in PDE's uh, uh, discretization. And actually, quite uh, recently, mm, with, uh, in uh, some joint papers with um, Espen Sand and Hendrik Steliers, uh, thanks to the um, investigation of these uh, spline spaces in terms of Kolmogorov and Wick that I will mention a little bit uh, more deeper later, uh, we got uh, a explicit expression for this uh, um, constant capital K, at least in the L2 norm. And um, this uh, is uh, quite important to analyze refinement strategies in PDs. But I hope that it will be clear in the in the next um, in the next uh, parts of the talk. So now, uh, so far, this is the one D setting. Uh, the simplest way to move from one D to multi D is, of course, to consider a tensor product uh, structure. And so you have uh, you consider two sequence of nodes, two degrees, and uh, you go for tensor product in the in the very simplest way. And uh, what uh, this is, is very powerful, and these uh, are just some, some, some pictures just for fun to see what you, can, uh, what you can have and how easy it is the modeling with this structure. Okay. However, there are, uh, there are some issues because um, there are some, uh, say, important, uh, say, objects mainly in the in practical applications that you cannot represent exactly by using the, these lines, which are piecewise polynomial curves. Uh, in, as an example, you cannot represent in an exact way the conic sections. As an example, uh, everybody knows that uh, this is a, a parametrization of the, the unit uh, circle, but this you cannot have just with, uh, with polynomials, you have to move from polynomials to rational functions. And uh, this is why and how the so-called famous NERBs, non-uniform rational displines, uh, arrive. So uh, the NERBs are nothing else than, uh, say, a rational version of uh, displines in the form that you can see in the in the slide, and uh, to define NERPs, uh, you, you need to have, uh, say, a sequence of weights. Uh, usually, you can uh, consider positive weights. Uh, you could also consider negative, but in practice, it's much more, say, efficient and easy, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> to consider positive weights. Okay, NERPs, they, they borrow from these plants uh, Almost, almost all the nice properties, total positivity, partition of unity, compact support, smoothness. And in addition, they allow uh, exact representation of segments of conic section. And they are um, implemented in the CAD systems as well. So uh, I, I, I would stress that in practical applications, say in mechanical engineering, but anyway, in, uh, in uh, in CAM application, meaning in computer um, aided manufacturing, to be able to uh, um, represent exactly conic section is, uh, is crucial. 
Okay, here you can see, maybe you don't see. Okay, you can see this is a representation of uh, equator quarter of um, circle. Okay, it seems uh, so far so good, but actually not completely good because um, if you want to represent, uh, say, an arc of a conic section, well, uh, the representation that you can get uh, by using NERVs is not uh, a parameterization of the conic section with respect to the arc plane. And uh, this, uh, unfortunately, the only stra straight lines have rational representation with respect to arc length. And so uh, this is quite unpleasant because uh, a representation with respect to arc length, it means that if you have equally spaced points in the parameter space, then they move in equally spaced points in the on the curve, and this is not the case for, for nerves. So um, this is quite unpleasant, but uh, say the unpleasant features uh, um, continue if you um, look uh, maybe more deeper, more deep in the, also in the analytical aspects. So uh, from the geometry point of view, you have already seen that, uh, so, okay, you need weights and uh, you don't have a parameterization with respect to arc length for conic section. Also, there are other, say, curves that uh, uh, cannot exactly uh, be represented by, um, by, by NERPS. But moreover, if you, if you want to use this uh, function also from an analytical point of view, you immediately notice that uh, if you consider the derivative uh, of uh, a, a polynomial curve, say, of degree P, then what you get is a polynomial curve of degree P minus one. But if you consider the derivative of a rational curve of degree P, this is not true anymore. And actually the structure, the analytical structure of, the, of your representation uh, worsens, deteriorates when, when you consider the derivative. Moreover, uh, say, um, exact integration of a rational curve is uh, not so easy to, to achieve. Uh, and um, also when you have, uh, say, formulas for them, you, you can get uh, non-rational thoughts. All these, uh, say, remarks, so let us uh, put in, say, in formulas, uh, suggest that, uh, so if you could consider other spaces for, uh, for your representation, some spaces that uh, I'm sure already uh, Costanza mentioned in her talk, uh, other spaces uh, that can be used to represent, uh, say, to represent uh, um, conic section. Of course, the natural representation of a circle is sinus of t, cosinus of t. This is the, the way to do. So if you um, insert in, in your space, uh, say, other function that can be used to have exact representation of the profiles you want, these uh, mm, spaces, as you can see here in some examples in the, in the slide, they also behave quite nicely with respect to uh, the derivative operator. As an example, if you, because the, the derivative of, uh, say, exponential and trigonometric function, they remain in the same, in the same space. And as I recall again, this is not true at all if you consider the derivative of rational function. So these simple remarks suggest that maybe we can look at alternatives to the rational model. The rational model is uh, the NEPS model, but uh, still uh, you want to keep the nice property of the displays. This is what you want to do. And uh, so the idea is to consider not only polynomial space, so not only PSYs polynomial functions, but uh, function which belongs PSYs to um, a bit a bit uh, larger spaces. Uh, as an example, you could uh, add say few, uh, um, say the minimum two uh, function U and V, which are not uh, polynomial, or you could uh, consider um, say 
adding some uh, exponentials. Uh, here, uh, the, the parameter beta are uh, intended to be complex numbers, so this include also the trigonometric functions. So um, these are just instances. The idea is that uh, you uh, can replace the structure, the, the polynomial space, with uh, some more general space, but still not too general, because otherwise you will lose uh, many properties. And uh, um, here we want to consider spaces which are extended Chebyshev spaces on a given interval, AB. What uh, this term means, it means that any non-trivial element of the space, so you have uh, a parameter, these are uh, spaces of uh, dimension P plus one, of smooth functions, and uh, mm, any non-zero element has at most P uh, plus one, uh, so, sorry, P zeros in the, in the interval counting the multiplicity. And uh, so here you have some examples and other, there are many, many much more examples, but say uh, an important case is uh, the kernel of the null space meaning of differential operators with uh, real constant coefficients of order. Okay, so the idea is uh, to uh, use these uh, more uh, general spaces uh, to replace uh, the uh, rational model. And uh, so uh, if uh, we consider instead of uh, PSYs polynomial, we consider function which belongs PSYs in this uh, uh, more general space, the, uh, the idea is uh, to see if it is possible to uh, construct and to analyze spline spaces, which uh, spaces of function which belongs piecewise in this more general space, uh, which have suitable bases, meaning that uh, they have bases with the same structure as the B spline. In the following, I will refer to GB splines when uh, the, the pieces of uh, my function belongs to a space of, of this form, so that just two functions are, uh, say, uh, replacing the, the polynomial part. And in general, uh, Chebyshevian B splines will be uh, B splines with section in a general uh, Chebyshev space. Okay, it is really impossible to say, to give credit to all the people who work in this, in this section. Here there is so nice, uh, so much uh, uh, nice mathematical results. Here I just mentioned few references, but for sure I, I cannot mention everybody. <clears throat> so there are uh, several, um, several methods, several perspectives, uh, and uh, it is uh, impossible, geometrical, analytical, via blossoming, and so on. It is impossible to, uh, to give uh, a, an exhaustive reference list, but if you are interested, I can provide some more references. So, generalized this plan. So, the simplest case, when you just add, uh, say, two functions, to replace, we replace it two, with two functions, the polynomial uh, part. And uh, so you, you have the same structure, you consider a set of, a set of nodes, and uh, you consider a degree, I still uh, use the term degree P um, because it is uh, natural in this context, but here meaning, what, what does it mean degree? It just means that the space have, uh, um, has, sorry, dimension P plus one. And um, we can uh, construct actually functions, which will be called generalized splines, that they have again minimum support. Uh, they are a basis for a function which belongs piece wisely in these uh, uh, section spaces. They are non negative, they form a partition of unity. And here you see uh, some of them. As an example, this is the case. Uh, with one interval to interval and so on of uh, uh, functions of B-spline, generalized B-splines uh, with section in that space. 
if uh, I would remove, uh, say, this uh, caption, probably no one will see any difference between this and the standard displays. Here, other example in the trigonometric case. What is nice is that, at least for generalized displays, you can always combine in different segments, different space. So you can combine exponential, uh, trigonometric, uh, and simple polynomial. And so this gives, gives you quite a lot of flexibility in your representation. And uh, what about the approximation power? Uh, the, um, in the generalized displaying, they behave in the same way as standard displaying. So actually, uh, the, here you see the, the difference uh, between the, uh, the standard and the trigonometric. And here is another, uh, another, uh, another case. This is the cubic uh, case of, with uh, two um, intervals and so on. And uh, completely similar uh, properties uh, you, can, uh, you can have uh, if you consider a more general space, a Chebyshev, uh, more general Chebyshev space. As an example, this is uh, the plot that you can have for Chebyshevian these uh, lines uh, with uh, uh, sections or belonging this wisely in this, in this space. Uh, here, just um, a warning or uh, a remark here, if you want to say to, to mix together different Chebyshev spaces in different intervals, then you have to pay attention because uh, this is not always uh, uh, allowed if you want uh, uh, a B-spline like basis. But uh, okay, in the, in the practical case, in the case of interest in practice, this is always uh, often the case. Okay, and now uh, something uh, to, to conclude this, say, um, introductory part. Uh, when we move to the, um, to the multi D setting, the easiest way is to move with the tensor product structure. But of course, the tensor product structure, they have, uh, say, um, a serious drawback. If you say, if you need to, to refine, if you have some feature in a, in a, in a given area and you, you need to refine, to keep the tensor product structure, you have to refine everywhere. And this is not uh, good in practical application. And uh, okay. And then you can, um, it would be nice uh, if you want to keep the local tensor product structure to have structure something uh, uh, in a sense uh, similar to, to what you see in, uh, in this picture. And these are called the T meshes uh, because T, because uh, you have some T junctions. And uh, mm, there are, uh, say, uh, several investigation in this, uh, in this direction. Uh, in order to uh, allow structure which uh, keep the uh, local tensor product structure, but uh, allow uh, an efficient local re refinement. It is, a, is, a point of the, is indeed the case of uh, key meshes. Here you can see, as an example, in this area, you, you need to refine, but not everywhere. What is, uh, mm, so there are, um, also here, there are several, several um, results and uh, research in this direction. And there are um, several ways to attach the problem, these splines, uh, splines over the mesh in general, LR splines, hierarchical splines. And uh, also here, it is not possible to give a proper, uh, say, exhaustive reference. But what I want uh, to, to point out is that uh, Due to the structural similarities of the Chebyshevian splines with the standard polynomial splines, what you can do with, uh, say, uh, the standard B spline in the perspective of refinement, you can also do with uh, generalized B splines or Chebyshevian splines. This is uh, the message that I want to pass. So mm, there is, uh, in a sense, a one to one match. Okay, and uh, now let us move to the use of B splines and their generalization, meaning GB and Chebyshevian splines in simulation. 
So uh, in uh, particular, in the concept of isogeometric uh, analysis, uh, isogeometric analysis is a general paradigm for the um, numerical treatment of PDEs. Actually, um, it's, it's, it's not the, the first, um, say, attempt to use splines in the general um, configuration to solve PDEs, but um, it, it presents this, uh, this tool in, in a systematic way. So, it uh, is a geometric analysis is a, a framework which uh, aims to unify the CAD representation with the finite element analysis. And um, so let me give the general idea. In general, you have, uh, say, a differential problem. So you have an operator, LU, in a, in a given domain omega with some boundary condition. You want to find your solution in a given space B. And uh, usually you select an approximation, approximating space BH, which is included in B. And uh, you uh, want uh, to compute an approximate solution in BH by considering a suitable approximation strategy, say Galerkin. We will focus on, on Galerkin in this talk. And as an example, the classical C0 finite element method uh, chooses for the discrete the approximating space VH, the class of piecewise polynomial of degree P, which are C0 on a triangulation of a poly polygonal approximation of your domain omega. And uh, you can refine your grid, uh, decreasing the, the size of the element, or uh, you can uh, uh, refine your, say, your space, increasing the degree of your elements. The point is that um, in practice, in several applications, say structural mechanics or whatever, the physical domain for your PDEs is often now or always the output of a CAD system. And um, then when you go for the simulation, you replace the geometry provided by the CAD with the geometry of the, uh, of the fan. And, uh, and this is the so-called meshing part. And this meshing is very expensive in the overall analysis time. And uh, the refinement, if you need to refine your mesh, this means that you have to interact back with the CAD model. And then in addition, you also notice that uh, um, uh, in, um, in, in many problems, uh, say shell structure of, uh, or boundary layers uh, and so on, these problems are very sensitive to uh, geometric imperfection. So a, a careful representation of the geometry of your domain is so important. And then it is uh, uh, to try, it, it is natural to try to develop a framework uh, where uh, you want uh, to have a better or uh, even, uh, if it is exact, uh, even better, or at least a better way to represent uh, the geometry. And so the idea of the isogeometric analysis is to use the same uh, function to represent your geometry and uh, to represent also the, uh, the space of the approximate solution. And so since the geometry is the output of the CAD and use the B-spline, you want to use B-splines also for analysis. That's it. So let, let us be a little bit more specific. We come back to our, uh, to our uh, say, model problem as an, uh, and we focus on the lurking. So we go for weak formulation. We have a bilinear form. We have a, 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 linear, uh, a linear form depending on, on the data. And uh, as an example, this is the standard formulation that you have for, say, the Laplacian. And the Galerkin approach um, means to consider a subset of your space and then to uh, look for the solution in this uh, uh, subset, uh, subspace, so that uh, the uh, equation, uh, the, the bilinear form equal to the, the linear functional is uh, uh, equal for any test function in the space. And this uh, for uh, linear problems amounts to a linear system to solve a linear system. 
Okay, uh, of course, if you have a different choice of your approximating space, uh, you have uh, different methods. And uh, what is the approach of isogeometric analysis? The, the approach is, uh, in a sense, quite simple. So you consider a parametric a reference parametric domain, say omega zero, the standard square as an example. And then you map with a geometry map your um, parametric domain to your physical domain. And this you can do because your physical domain is the output of your CAD system. And, uh, and then uh, in the parametric domain, you consider the basis, uh, say the BISPLAN basis, the basis that you use in your CAD system. And in the uh, physical domain, you use as discrete discretization, uh, the basis of the discretization uh, uh, space, just the composition of the basis in the parametric domain with the index of the geometry map. That's it. Uh, in the in his, in his standard and primitive uh, um, formulation, isogeometric analysis is based on tensor product nerves, meaning that in the parametric space, you use uh, tensor product nerves. However, <clears throat> uh, so, not however, uh, in this way, you, you, can, uh, you can gain what you gain with, with nerves, so you have uh, exact representation of conic section. And when uh, you have an exact representation of your, your geometry, and uh, if you um, have to refine the mesh, uh, this is not a problem because the geometry is exactly represented from the beginning. So you don't need to go back to your CAD uh, uh, geometry. Moreover, there are uh, several, also in this case, possibility, possibilities of refinement. And uh, a point which is more crucial, but maybe not so clear, is that the additional smoothness of uh, these splines, of splines and these splines, is, uh, can be beneficial. And uh, of course, in this context, it's extremely important that uh, you have an efficient and stable algorithm for evaluation and representation of your basis patch. Okay, so it is a more, uh, I, I will, point out that um, the smoothness can help in... Um, sorry. Can, can help in reducing the number of degrees of freedom still keeping the same accuracy. As an example, if you uh, consider, say, the, the spline uh, of the grip E and C0 smoothness, and the spline of the grip E and P, P minus one smoothness, they have the same approximation order, but the dimension is very difficult, is, is very different. This is the relation. And in 1D, you don't appreciate, but if you go to multi-D, you see that uh, uh, the dimension, which gives you the number of degrees of freedom is quite substantially different. So this is also a point. However, uh, it's not necessary to use nerves uh, as, uh, say, a, an ingredient in your isogeometric analysis approach. And uh, actually, uh, the idea is that uh, since we have seen that also in modeling uh, uh, nerves, they have some drawbacks, you can improve also in uh, analysis if you replace your nerves in the as basis function in the parametric domain, you replace the nerves by, say, uh, other uh, B-spline-like uh, function, like the GB, generalized B-splines, or the Chebyshevian B-splines. And uh, which, which spaces you have to choose? Well, this is the, it has been done in a problem dependent, uh, um, say, perspective. Is the problem that has to uh, give you uh, the, the idea of what, uh, what space is more appropriate. I, I'll show you in, uh, in, in, in one minute some examples. And uh, uh, in the um, general displines and Chebyshevian displines actually are just plug to plug with NERBS in isogeometric analysis. And this uh, is now possible because they are efficient evaluation algorithms based on basic extraction, also for generalized displines and Chebyshevian displines. And uh, <clears throat> so you keep uh, with this function the same benefits as NERPS, but 
maybe you can gain something more over NERPS in, um, by using a, a problem-dependent selection of these species. Okay? Uh, as I, I, I told you, uh, how to choose the species, well, it depends on, on the problem that you have to solve. Let me be quite uh, uh, quickly. As an example, if you have to solve uh, a problem in a geometry, here this is a standard elasticity problem, so it is an infinity plate with a circular hole, and uh, you have a uh, stretching in the x direction. So by symmetry, you, this is your um, physical domain. So since you have circle here, it is quite uh, natural to use uh, this space to represent the geometry. In this way, you have uh, an exact representation of, uh, of your, uh, of your uh, geometry. And uh, indeed, if you do so, uh, this is the behavior of the stress. This is, uh, you can compare the exact with what you, you get. This uh, also, the, you, you can uh, exploit the local refinement. This is, you can see the mesh. Uh, what is this? Okay, this is better. Uh, you, can, uh, you can see the mesh on, uh, on your uh, right. And uh, this is how behaves the error. And you can see that the red part, which is the trigonometric spline, behaves better than the standard spline. And the mm, continuous line is a local refinement and the dashed line is a mm, global refinement. Here, uh, I, I want just to show another example. Here, if you have, say, a diffusion advection problem uh, with not constant coefficient, so in this physical domain, then in, in this case, you have that the advection is uh, going along the tangential direction. And if you try to discretize this, pay, this problem just in the standard this line, then this is what you get, which is uh, absolutely uh, not, uh, not good. And uh, uh, so the idea is that uh, here you have to uh, take inspiration from your problem, both, both from the geometry point of view, so you need trigonometric to represent exactly your domain, but uh, you can also need some, say, uh, exponential part to uh, mimic the, uh, the, advection, uh, the advection part as much uh, as, uh, in the best way you can. And so, and uh, this is what you get uh, in, in, this, uh, in this space. And what is important is that you can automatically choose the parameters. Of course, it's not a fine tune that you have to do. So this is the, what, you, you, what you can have. So I don't know if I still have, say, a few, few more, few more uh, minutes. Yes, yes, you, you, you can. To, to go a little bit in a, in a more specific, uh, in a more specific problem. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm a, probably a little bit in late, but okay. So I, I want. Sorry. So I want. I I want to get rid of this. Okay. So I, I, I would present, uh, say, a more specific problem instead of this general, um, general idea. So I want to discuss the, um, the problem of the approximation of eigenvalue of differential op operators and uh, of the outliers, what I mean. So let us consider a very, very simple eigenvalue problem, the Latin approximation of, uh, say, the uh, eigenvalue of the second derivative. Every, with uh, Dirichlet boundary conditions. So the exa solution is, uh, is given by, as everybody knows, the sinus and the, um, the eigenvalues are given by the square of the integer uh, multiple of pi. You can go as usual with the weak formulation and the solution, uh, you look the solution in H01, and you can uh, look for a discretization of this problem and then you consider a given spline space of the P with some, uh, say, uh, sequence of, of nodes. And uh, K now is the smoothness. It is important to stress the smoothness of the space. And so the discretization space is, uh, you choose the intersection of your spline space with H01, so you fix your boundary condition. And here, capital N is the dimension of the space. So 
what, uh, what I show here is probably one of the most uh, famous uh, picture in isogeometric analysis. Uh, if, you, if you do this discretization, you, uh, you have this, uh, this, uh, this plot. What is this plot? Uh, let us discuss a little bit. So uh, here you have the ratio between the approximate frequencies, the omega are the square root of the eigenvalues, and the exact ones. By the minimum, the maximum principle, necessarily the approximated one are greater than the true ones. And uh, here in the x-axis, what you get, you, you, you get, say, you, you report the, the j, so the which index of the eigenvalue you are approximating with respect to the total number that you want to approximate is uh, capital M, the dimension of your space. And what you see is that uh, uh, this, this plot, you have p minus k branches. p is the degree, k is, is the smoothness. So if you uh, are in the case k equals zero, the standard uh, FEM, uh, you have uh, p branches. And this is why, and as an example here, you see this blue line is the case p equal two for, uh, for, the, for the FEM. And you have, you see, this is very good, but this is not good at all. And this is why I order finite element methods are, are not uh, so inspiring for approximation of the eigenvalues and the eigenfunctions. On the other hand, and here the smoothness play a role, if you consider maximum smoothness, so k is p minus one, then you have just one branch. And here is what you see, you see the, the, the thick line. So uh, if you go for uh, say isogeometric analysis, meaning uh, 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 maximal smoothness splines, you have a good approximation of the whole, of the whole spectrum, not just of one part. And uh, so it seems that this is very nice, but still uh, there are still problems because uh, uh, this is not, you don't see in the previous, part, uh, in the previous picture, if you, if you look uh, uh, better, uh, there are a few, few, uh, frequencies that uh, are poorly approximated and such that the corresponding computed values are uh, much larger than the exact ones. You see here, this, uh, you see, uh, this is the case D equal five and uh, you have see uh, here, you have this four, this four and, and the same also. And uh, these spurious values are uh, uh, what we usually call outliers. And uh, it, it is um, observed that um, the number of outliers is independent of the number of the dimension of the approximating space. I mean, I go back here. Here means that you are approximating 25 eigenvalues, here 50, and in the, in the last, uh, in the last uh, one, uh, 100. But you see that the outliers are always four, and this four is related to this uh, P, to the degree. Uh, it increases with p, and uh, you could guess that the, our Chebyshevian spline could help in this context as well, because, well, uh, we know that the solution are trigonometric function, then maybe if we insert some trigonometric function in the approximating space, it goes better. Actually, it goes a little bit better, but still the outliers are there. They are not that terrible uh, here, but they are there in the same number as with the, the standard display. And uh, here it comes uh, into, into the ground, the, the result that we really we recently had uh, with uh, Espen and Hendrix uh, Peliers. Actually, we can prove that um, if we consider this setting, you can have at most uh, P minus one outliers. And uh, one could guess, but why we are so um, concerned with outliers? Actually, first of all, because we want a good description of the spectrum, but also because uh, uh, if you <clears throat> if you have, uh, say, um, an approximation which is outlier free. Uh, this is uh, beneficial in various contexts as an example for uh, uh, processes which are time dependent for the selection of the time step. Uh, 
And of course, the difficult part, as you can guess, is uh, to remove outliers, but don't, you don't want to, to, to have any loss of accuracy for uh, the approximation of all the spectra. And uh, actually, uh, you can, uh, you can uh, say, say something in this direction to provide outlier free discretization if you go with, uh, say, uh, some results which are based on Kolmogorov and with, here I just uh, recall what, uh, what is the meaning of the Kolmogorov and with. So you have a class of function, say in L2, here this is the L2 norm, but can be in any norm, here is L2. Uh, then, uh, uh, and you have a finite dimensional subspace, say capital X. And this, this is the distance of uh, A to X. And the Kolmogorov N width is the infimum uh, uh, of this quantity uh, taken over all the spaces of uh, subspaces of dimension N, the same dimension. And the space is optimal for a given class if uh, its distance is actually equal to the Kolmogorov N width. Uh, there, is a, there are a lot of results in this direction and very, very nice. I just want to mention that it can be proved that if you add some boundary conditions to your spline space, then, uh, and you choose properly the, the nodes in a, in, in a uniform way, then these spaces are optimal in the sense that we have seen before for what for which class of function? For the function in HR that uh, verify this additional boundary condition. Why this class of is of our interest? Because of course, the, um, the Aiken functions of our problem, they verify, they satisfy this additional boundary condition. Not only the values of the function are zero, but also all the even derivatives, their assigns. And uh, <clears throat> Thanks to, to this result, we, we can prove uh, some error estimate for the risk projector and in these optimal spaces. And thanks to, to this, we can prove that there is no loss of accuracy in the whole spectrum. Uh, and we have that all the first eigenvalues and eigenfunction are well approximated when we discretize in an optimal size space of dimension n. So the same dimension as the number of eigenvalues which are well approximated, meaning that we don't have any outlier anymore. And this is the situation. So let me, let me briefly conclude uh, this, uh, say, uh, survey. So um, we know that uh, these splines and actually the rational version are the core of commercial tax system. And uh, they are also interesting in the context of numerical simulation. And uh, they, have been, uh, they, they have received, uh, say, in a sense, uh, a, a renewed interest uh, thanks to isogeometric analysis. Uh, what we can say is that the generalization uh, of uh, bisplines, which are generalized bisplines, Chebyshevian splines, they, uh, from one side, they behave similar to NERPs, but they can uh, also have some advantages with respect to NERPs uh, if we properly choose the, the spaces in a problem dependent, um, according to a problem dependent strategies. And, uh, 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 they have been proven to be interesting in several applications. What are the challenges in this area? There are still uh, several changes, uh, challenges, sorry. Uh, actually, um, to, in, in simulation uh, between, uh, say, IGA and FEM, mainly if we go in, uh, in high dimension. And um, also, if we just look at the, the at the side of the geometry. Also, um, what I present is, are, say, simple, extremely simple case, but the, in practical application, the geometry is, uh, is much more complicated. And so uh, it is uh, of interest to, to do a proper analysis on uh, complex geometries, uh, 
which are uh, made by trimmed, uh, say, geometries, uh, multi-patch of geometry, and so on. And a very important point is also the, um, the modeling of, of volumes. This is why the 3D case is so, is so difficult, because uh, the CAD output uh, is, uh, um, is the surface of an object, is the so-called so BREP um, boundary presentation. But to do analysis, we need uh, the volume representation, and this is uh, also challenging. And also, say the use of, of the use of um, simulation in the uh, in the area of uh, microstructure. So here, just uh, say some picture for applications, say in uh, biomedicine, in uh, the area of, uh, of of fusion, in the area of uh, additive manufacturing. So just uh, some uh, examples, and uh, that's it. I'm sorry, I was uh, over my time, partially due to, due to the problem and partially due to me. I'm sorry. <laughs> thank you. So, thank you for a very interesting talk. So are there any questions, remarks? Can I ask one question? Please. Uh, you mentioned evaluation algorithm based on Bezier extraction. Yeah. Could you just say a couple of words? What is that? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, probably I wanted to pass too, too many, too many okay. information. So the I, idea- so, so, As far as I know, it's very recent, yeah? Yeah, uh, well, um, so the, the, so far the IGA tried to, to mimic the, the FEM. And so um, the, the FEM implementation is element-based. So you do something in one element. So the Bezier extraction is the idea to uh, say, to represent your bispline in a given element uh, in terms of uh, Bernstein, uh, Bernstein polynomials. This is why it's called Bezier instruction. And um, of course, uh, you, you, can, you can do that because uh, there are polynomials. And the, the Bezier instruction is just uh, the matrix that uh, convert your bispline in the, the form of uh, Bernstein polynomial on a given mm -hmm. And in this way, you can pass, say, uh, your evaluation to, to the code of, of the FEM because it is uh, element-wise uh, based. That's... Uh, I don't know if uh, it, 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 it. No, no, that's, uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, mm -hmm, it's clear. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, it's not a question, it's some kind of a remark. Uh, this fact that when you add uh, to the algebraic monomials, for example, an exponential or cosine or sine function, it stays the Chebyshev system. It was new to me. But um, so you can change the fact that you that you can take uh, some algebraic monomials t to the, some powers and add to them uh, two or three exponentials and still get a Chebyshev system a t system. It, it was new to me. So, well, the, it, in general, you have a Chebyshev system. Uh, so a Chebyshev system, if you have the kernel. So you, you, you can merge two, two types, two different types of Chebyshev systems, it was new, new to me. So there are two different questions. Uh, so uh, to have a Chebyshev space, you can, uh, as an example, look yes. at the null space of a differential operator uh, with constant coefficients. And then uh, if you look at this, uh, you, you see that you, you can have, uh, say, you can mix uh, polynomials, trigonometric and exponential, because these are, say, the, the function that you have in, in the null spaces of uh, um, differential operator with constant coefficients. And this is a, a thing. So, but there is also another thing that you can mix in different intervals, different Chebyshev spaces, meaning that in one interval you can say polynomial, in the other interval you can say uh, exponential, but this is a little bit more tricky, and uh, there are some conditions that has to have to be satisfied. Um, 
But in your example, you you uh, you took uh, one Chebyshev system on one segment and the other on the second, or you merged them? What, what was no, no. In in my example, except uh, I I'll show you. In my example, it is always the same. Uh, this uh, I, I let me let me show what I mean. So here, but this is not my example. Wait a moment. I uh, echo. This one. This one, you have different spaces in different interval. I don't know, do you, do you still see my... Yes, it is, everything is fine. The, the, in this example, you have different spaces in different intervals. So here you have just exponential, here you have just a, a polynomial. But in the simulation that I show you, as an example, the, the, where it is, the, this one, the last one, as an example, where it is. No, uh, I mean a much, much more, this, a, much, a much simpler part of your talk from the very beginning of it. Uh, so this one here, the, here, here you see the the, the Chebyshev space that I consider. Can you read at the at the yes, bottom? Yes, yes, I, I see. Uh -huh. So it, it it means that in an, in each interval, this is the space where my function belongs to. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. This is the, your question. Yes, more it's more or less my question because uh, we see. We can see here the merge of two systems, the system of exponentials yeah, actually, and the and algebraic polynomial. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. okay. But that's uh, these these are just the root uh, of uh, just the root of a polynomial. So if, if whenever you can create a polynomial uh, which have these kind of roots, then you have a Chebyshev system. Thank you. That's it. That's why you have cosinus and sinus because these they come from the the complex uh, conjugate yes. roots of uh, a polynomial with real. Um, what is more surprising is the, the, the simple Vulcan uh, term T. It's more surprising. Sorry? We see more here surprising. one, then T, then the exponent of B zero T. So this, the first T is much more surprising for me. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. That's it. Some other questions? Uh, I don't know. I, I just, I, I did not give precise reference, but uh, uh, after you can see that I have uh, more slides than what I show. Here I have, uh, later I have a sequence of reference that maybe can be of interest. Uh, so they are in the slide for the different parts, uh, more precise. Just in case. That's it. There were some references when I I saw the name of Lusian, but maybe it, it was a Ooh. little bit Lusian. It, it was on the previous page. Maybe you can show us this one. Yes, Lusian theorems, sequences, and matrix computations. Mm -hmm. But. Mm -hmm. Yes, this is a is a part that I did not mention in my talk. There is a so there is all uh, so a, a whole part of the interesting part of investigation about the the linear solvers for the system that uh, you you get from this discretization, and uh, to to fine tune good linear uh, solvers, you have to to really understand the structure of the spaces you are using. So the degree plays a role and, uh, and these are some results about in this perspective, but um, okay, it was already too much in my opinion. And so I decided don't mention it. Okay. Classical bit plans, I mean, for cardinal base plans, uh, if we take uh, a convolution, we still obtain a base plan, yes? Uh, if we take a convolution yeah. of cardinal B splines, we still have a B spline of higher order. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, so if you, uh, do you use convolution technique and the Chebyshev B splines to increase? Okay, for, for the GB or? case, for the GB case, uh, the so the, the, the simple the, the GB is the simplest case in a sense is the is the minimal distance from the polynomial case because you just move. Uh, 
uh, two elements. Then uh, you can, uh, you can uh, say, construct uh, the analogous, the complete analogous of cardinal bisplines in this setting. And you can go by convolution starting, uh, uh, starting from something which is similar to the head function. So for, in the standard bispline, you, you can start uh, the convolution also. So you can start from the, the constant, but you can start the convolution with the head function. And uh, for, for the GB, you can do exactly the same. Of course, you have to, to ask for some symmetry in your space. And you start from something which is analogous to the head function, and which is something like that if you have a trigonometric function, and something like that if you have a, a exponential function. Ah, so it's, it's, you, uh -huh. it's given piecewise, uh, but not, let's say, not linear, right? It can be piecewise. No, not linear. Not linear. Uh, so, yeah. this is, this is a, so this is the, uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> do you see? This is the head function, yeah, yeah, this is the polynomial. Mm -hmm. This is the exponential case, analogous of the head function. And this is the analogous of the head function in the trigonometric case. And then mm -hmm. starting from that, then you, you go for convolution and, and you add the, the convolution gives you the polynomial part. Mm -hmm. you, I, mm -hmm. I don't know if it is clear what I mean. So just, just show me, I, I'll show just uh, the structure of the space. Sorry, and then I, I, I stop <laughs> speaking, uh, sorry, that's, uh, okay, here as an example. So this is the GB case. So you have a two, uh, say, trigonometric, and then you start from a function like that. And then the convolution gives, apply, you, you, you go for convolution with the, the standard, let's say, piecewise um, constant, the standard um, characteristic function, you go, you get these two elements. Mm -hmm. But in, in, the, in a general Chebyshev space, uh, well, you, you need too much symmetry to have something uh, which is uh, really similar to the cardinal bispline. The cardinal bispline is the, say, the, the paradise of symmetry. And, uh, and then if you don't have this, uh, you don't get. But for the GB, it's fine. Mm -hmm. it's <clears throat> Thank you. You're welcome. I'm sorry, uh, Vladimir. I'm sorry, for Russian. Vladimir, uh, это да. Дмитрий, угу. uh, не поможешь перевести вопрос? Да, да, uh, вот если в меше, uh, четырехугольном меше, у нас есть вершина валентности 3, угу. тогда построить мюрс сложно. Вот не угу. порекомендовали бы, что посмотреть вот, угу. какую-нибудь ссылку? Сейчас я попробую, да. Окей, okay, this was the question of uh, Professor Gorbachev. Uh, so if we have a, a quadratic mesh, the standard quadratic mesh, mm -hmm. yeah? Quad quadratic mesh? Yeah, so quadra 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 rectangular, yeah. rectangular mesh, yeah? Okay, so, so this? Yes, but, okay. mm -hmm, but uh, uh, in this mesh, you have one vertex of, of uh, Valencia three. So three edges go from it. Okay. Then it's, uh, uh, it's a problem to construct this nurse, yeah? Yeah, yeah, and this yeah. is, yes, this is, uh, so this is one of the challenges that uh, <laughs> is, uh, so of uh, geometric analysis. So the so-called uh, extraordinary points that uh, it is completely similar to what Costanza mentioned, uh, mentioned before. And actually, uh, so the, they, they, they pop out when you have different patches, which, uh, which comes together. If you have a single patch, you can, you can do that. And uh, in that case, uh, there are uh, constructions uh, that uh, are, um, are considered. And this is what I mentioned in this uh, final uh, part with the, okay, that, when I, I mentioned the multi-patch. And uh, there are, um, so usually what happens is that uh, you have to give up maximal smoothness, of course, because uh, oh, okay. the, the smoothness in this uh, extraordinary point. And um, there are techniques. And so to the best of my knowledge so far, mm, we don't have any reasonable construction more than C1. Uh, okay, I see. Thank you. I but, see. And uh, also, the, also the C1 construction is very, 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 very technical. I have uh, my favorite, uh, say, um, answer for, for that. You should not go with quad. You should go with triangles. And that's it. Mm -hmm. 
and go for splines uh, on triangles. I see, I see. <laughs> and, and go for B splines on triangles. Okay, I mean, you can go eye smoothness, huh? also in a multi -beam. But the problem problem is that I need, I need, I have to use NURBS, NURBS. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, wait. Okay, but, I see. But neither, neither the negative results on this direction. Mm. So about the smoothness. So you, you, no, you can uh, well, there are, there are negative the, results about the, say that it, it's impossible. No, no, not for the construction. There are negative results to get uh, maximal approximation power. Mm, uh, mm. Uh, concerning the, these, they are negative results. You, can, you cannot go maximal smoothness and, uh, and have uh, maximal approximation power. That is, that there are some say what the engineers call the locking, the locking um, phenomena. Uh -huh. But uh, as far as I know, there are no negative results. So um, clean negative result for the construction. Mm -hmm. So something is that you can construct the space, and something else is the properties of the space that you get. These are two different questions. Thank you. I see it's interesting, very interesting. So, so some other questions. If not, then let's thank the speaker. Okay. So, oh, I don't know. No. Maybe okay. the organizers want to say something. And we only can say that thank you very much to everybody, uh, to the speakers and to the audience. Maybe I stop sharing my screen. It's not necessary. Uh -huh. yeah. So, and that's it. We can close it. I think it was pretty good uh, workshop. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, everybody. Bye. Goodbye. Have a nice evening. Oh, have a nice evening. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.